at the 2019 Game Developers Conference. You can look forward to an array of talks from speakers across the video game industry. During the week, you will hear from industry legends, niche experts, and amazing advocates, many of whom will want to learn about you and your work as much as you do theirs. At this year's show, King Narrative Design Lab Tracy John will be in an array of sessions, all designed to help writers and designers tell better stories both big and small in video games. John's had a long career in X, writing, and more, so we wanted to pick her brain about her experience and what she will be talking about at DD this year. If you are a writer, are just someone who works in games that need narrative. You can now read Tom's for QA down below. Would you please introduce yourself on top about your role in game development? I am Tracy Chong, the studio lead of narrative design at King Stop Home Studio. I oversee all the narrative designers and the narrative design work across all the games in the studio. I also act as the lead narrative designer on several projects. The narrative design craft at King entails working closely with the teams to create stories, characters, dialogue, text, law, and other narrative elements for our games. We are the narrative evangelists, championing story and context, and ensuring that all the narrative elements are cohesive and engaging for our players. Without spoiling it, what will you be talking about at BD? I am really fortunate to be doing three sessions this year. In storytelling in small spaces, practical narrative design for mobile games, I will be talking about how narrative designers at King work, together with different disciplines to give narrative context to our games, as well as how we try to optimize narrative opportunities in a post-mortem, unreleasing Candy Crush Friends Saga. I will join my King colleagues Jeremy Ken and Robert McKenzie as they talk about design and art direction for the game. My portion will be about how we retrofitted a narrative universe to the Candy Crush set of franchise and the ways we implemented some of those elements in France. And finally, in how to get a job writing for games, I will join Zach Garris from Deck 9 Games where we will share some advice on the application process, interviewing, and how you can succeed once you land a job. What excites you most about the future of game development? Every year, I am astonished and delighted by all the different kinds of games that are released, as well as the growing diversity of people who make and play them. As the people who make games becomes more and more diverse, I believe the stories that will be told will become more innovative, thought-provoking, and compelling. Narrative design is not just about writing words, it's about creating a world for your players. To build an engaging and cohesive game world, narrative design should be a part of everyone's role. What's something about your specific field you want your colleagues to know more about? I worked on King's newest game. Candy Crush Friends Saga, and I am very lucky and proud to have worked with all the talented team members to bring the world of Candy Crush and its characters to life in 3D. There are still a lot of narrative opportunities to flesh out in the game, and I cannot wait to bring more characters and stories to players in future updates. Vote over at Tracy John's website. Bring your team to BD. Register a group of 10 or more and save 10% on conference passes. Learn M-O-R-A-H-E-R-A. For more details of NGDC 2000, on 19 visit the show's official website, or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, OS, Goddard Sutra and DD as sibling organizations, under parent company and former. Tusk is a terrific 90s inspired horror action shooter that, as of this writing, is rated overwhelmingly positive on Steam. 
published by Nooklot Interactive, it achieved that popularity with a combination of evocative mood, fast-paced action, and a visual style that hit the nostalgia bullseye. After years in development, including a period in early access, Tusk finally hit full release a month ago. We talked to creator, programmer, level builder and game designer David Shemansky about this successful quake in homage. Shemansky explains his game in his words. At first yeah, before we watched anyone play, I got the game and taught players, hands, you get thrown into the deep end from moment one. But it's part of a fake deep end. You have plenty of health under battle, Tusk's version of Anna, and room, to kite enemies around. And even if you do end up dying, once it's pretty obvious what you have to do the next time around, provided they were on an appropriate difficult level and provided they have at least some basic knowledge of standard FPS controls. I do not think I have ever seen a player die there more than once. I uh, give up without getting past the first room. It's kind of unwanted tutorial. It is giving players a chance to warm up. It gets them familiar with the basic controls, movement speed, and enemy behavior, just in a way that encourages them to immediately engage with the game instead of spending 15 minutes responding to on-screen tooltips. I do not think it's the sort of thing that would work for every game, but a disc, a game about getting back to basics and teaming the fat. It felt like an appropriate start. My go-to answer is always, pick any game from about 1993 to 2001 and it has probably inspired the dusk in some way. Obviously all the big ones, Doom, Quake, Half-Life, Duke, Blood, etc, etc, etc. But lesser known ones also, like, the blood effects do the particle arc thing you see in older lit tech games like Blood 2 and Showgirl. Several levels take cues from Dicaton. Yes, really. The climbing power up was partially informed by the alien in FF2. I basically just went in its taking elements I liked from various 90s shooters and did a referencing them, a wholesale stealing them and from other sorts of games too. From other eras, there's a lot of DUSX and Thief in Dusk, as well as Stalker and even some Condemned. And that's without even getting into Dave's contributions. There's an entire level layout patterned after a dungeon in Planescape, Torment. For instance, the reasoning to Savoke's classic FPS graphics was to fold. First, I am one guy and I make my assets in it from scratch, as near to scratch as I can get, making it look like Doom 2000 and 60 was never an option. Second, I just really really love that low poly software rendered look. Even a decade ago, when it was both mobile out of date and a long way from being fashionably retro, I adored hot games like Quake and Chasm. The riff looked, it's a bit more invoked now, but when I started a disc four-ish years ago, I think the only other game really shooting for that same thing was Strafe. There was not an established, this is no school only three drawback, art look, ah if there was I was not seeing it, and I could not find anything in the way of tutorials outlining old, skill modeling texture in workflows tech. So I basically just poured over old games, staring at walls and floors, and looked over quake models, and tried to reach some sort of aesthetic that moves everything together, while simultaneously learning to draw textures and model things other than blocky buildings. All that to say that desk look is a product of both the purposeful aesthetic direction and my own weaknesses and inexperience, which is why yet, maybe some of the models ended up looking blockier than Quake, and some of the textures do not pop quite as much or tile quite as 
will I communicate as much detail? But at the end of the day, it all looks like this, which I think is just as important. We have definitely gotten complaints about visuals not measuring up to quake in some areas. Are to newer mods like arcane dimensions, and of course, every so often there's someone who just plain old does not on board with an early treat look. But none of those seem to have affected the game in any meaningful way. With critics are of our audience, which I am very grateful for. The idea that you have to change cutting edge graphical tech to attract players、uh, as insurance against bad reviews seems really outdated to me. We have had years now of lower fidelity, or even downright ugly games going toe to toe with high fidelity professional looking efforts. One of the highest rated first person shooters on Steam right now is Blood and Bacon.